Hey YouTube, yeah, taking a break from the j for today. So I did a video of this earlier on when I put a, uh, another mod switch in it. This is a Washburn Mercury 2 series. Um, I think I've had a Mercury before. An, M is it an MG? Does MG stand for Mercury guitar? Something like an MG40 seems to ring a bell. Come on, focus. I can set that to be... I mean, I'm not drunk. I don't know why it's thing. This deciding to be. Come on. There we go. Stop holding things up to the camera. Stop ex expecting it to work. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. It doesn't really quite have a. Oh, it's an MG40. I'm sure it was an MG40 I've had before. Maybe an MG40 is just this shape. I'm sure my pal Alan had one, and it was a. It was a Floyd Rose with a mirror scratch plate. And possibly a pointy head. I think I also had one. It was um, a Steve Stevens signature. My pal um, James down the road had that he bought brand new but old stock. So it was from like 1991 or something like that. But it was still in its original cellophane and stuff like that. Uh, the, the blocks in the Floyd Rose had basically turned to dust inside the packaging. But it was all brand new but 30 or 40 years old. I, I, I remember having this headstock. Can't remember exactly what the guitar was. So this is... I'm going for... It's kind of like... It's a, it's basically a Pacifica sort of... Kind of... As in a direct competitor to said Pacifica. So you've got the... Basically, it was a similar sort of body. You know, you've got like a, a nice natural wood thing here. You've got a bit of a scoop there on the back. Um, We've got a nice two-point trem... Quite, a, quite an industrial looking thing, a, a sort of solid cast block, very over engineered, I, I like it, um, kind of just sits on two pivot posts, it's a good looking trem, not not locking in any way, it's got a decent big block in the back, it's got Grover tuners on it and they'll be stock, um, and then the pickups have numbers, a 511, a 512 and a 523 Washburn pickups. I believe this guitar is a cork built because see the, the pickups I like that have got the two screws on the top. The Japanese used to do it. And then according to the people I've talked to, basically it was a cost saving measure. It's like we're selling pickups and it's like to put two screws in costs more than to put one in. Yeah. Which I can sort of understand in pure super budget guitars, you know. You know, if you're maybe trying to churn out, a, you know, doing a Harley Benton and trying to churn out a guitar for you know, a hundred quid, maybe, maybe, maybe. But, I mean, if you're Seymour Duncan or Fender or something, put the other screw in so you can actually adjust the angle of it. Yeah, so it makes it seems a very sensible thing to me. Um, But Court also used the three screws in the 90s, so I, I'm assuming that's what this is. The serial number, I'm going to, I know it's I know it's not focusing, but see what it says there, what it says Japan. Oh. You're not able to hear me because I'm away from the mic. See? It doesn't actually say Japan. It says MG40 1AP slash AN. So I mean, whether that's it's like the serial number starts four. I think that probably makes this 1994. But the fact that it's 1AP AN and it totally, it totally looks like it says Japan. Right, you want to see it? Yeah. Uh, no, it'll be, it'll be Korean. Court, I think. I just I wonder that, that that can't have been an accident. I don't know. If people are looking at it. I mean, I suppose if you know what you're looking at with these guitars, you know that they weren't making Japanese washburns at this time. You know, when it, by the time the Super Strat era came in. So it's actually got a. When I say it's Pacifica, it's, it's that way. It's, it's a Pacifica, it share do everything early 90s Super Strat. But this has the a fretboard more akin to. The RG, it's actually a good bit smaller than the RG because we're both hanging on the wall next to each other. Sorry, I'm sorry. I say RG, I mean PGM, but same thing. See, it, it's it's significantly... Maybe it isn't. It just looks it. It looks much shorter. I think it is. I think, I think this is maybe an inch longer or something like that. I see the... No, well. no, if you imagine it's got the same fretboard as that... So where I think what they're trying to do here, um, I'm just I'm just going for the competing with 
uh, the Yamaha Pacifica because if you're in the shop back in the days when people used to go into shops remember you used to go into shops and try a guitar and see which one was best back in those days I think this would probably have been pitched with the Yamaha Pacifica by being very similar also it would probably be quite a higher model it wouldn't be the one one because this has got Grover tuners and a fancy bridge on it so this would probably be I don't know if maybe somewhere between the cheap the cheaper and the middle range Pacificas but probably closer to the price of the cheaper one but closer to the spec of the more expensive one you know, just the only thing so it's got um it's got the fret markings along the edge don't really make any difference but they look cool uh yeah so I suppose I could make some noise with it I was going to, I was going to say something else yeah so the fretboard's a 12 inch radius not a 10 which is more normal also the Pacifica has I mean, we're talking a couple of millimetres here a thinner a thinner neck it's got a small neck this has got a big neck so I think there's probably an element of people going oh I much prefer the big chunky neck which is fair enough if that's what you're after um, to me it's kind of almost in the Jackson territory you know what a Jackson neck feels like it's a similar it's not as flat on the back as the PGM is Um the PGM is basically a Wizard 2 neck. I could have picked up that one. Um, so it's, it's the same fingerboard, but a more less pop. SG, my, my SG standard. Or it's not a standard, it's a special. That, it's kind of almost a Gibson profile on it. 24 frets. I'm, pretty, I'm sure the Pacificas are not 24. So it's like in the sports strat range, but this would be closer to the RG than the strat whereas the Pacifica's closer to the Strat, even though ultimately much the same. Um, yeah, so this one uh, comes, so it's got the HSS, it's got a, a push-pull cog split, which splits the humbucker, the same as my wee Red Star. I went in, this, is, this isn't my guitar, this is my pals. This might be a two, it's not going to be a two guitar video. Um, well, it might be, I'm going to play the wee Talman bass, it's the same, my pal loads it as well. But... Um, or something I meant to do in the Roadstar ages ago and forgot about, and I've actually lent him the Roadstar, so... Because he was thinking of buying one, so I, was, I have a shot. I mean, not very often you get the choice of going, oh, quite fancy one of those guitars, I wonder what they're like, and I've got one. It's like, I never really... Well, actually, I thought about it about three weeks ago, and then I thought, no, I can't give him that. The strings on it are six months old, so I put new strings on it, played it for a couple of days. Here you go. You know, get, a, get a free shot of it, and if... You know, you, you know what it's like with these guitars, especially sometimes you play it, especially if you're looking at something like a uh, Japanese guitar like a West Tone Thunder or something like that, get a shot of one of them for two weeks and not you don't bond with everything. Some things after a couple of weeks, you just never play it again, so then just give it back, that's it. Or, and the thing about these guitars is they'll all be the same. You know, like that Roadster, if you buy the same model of Roadster as that, it's the same. It's not like modern. The Japanese have got a different quality level. It's not like now where you get, oh, like one in 10 is really good. Eight and ten is kind of all right. One's pure terrible. Not none of that anymore. They're all good. They're all the same. Um, there's no magic. Japanese guitars. They're always. They're always good. Um, so, neck pickup. Got big frets on it as well. Just before. really judge the, the, the trem so far it seems to be dead responsive but you never know until you've played it for a few hours and then you start realizing that you're having to tune it every time you do it that's when you go down on it but it, it's all looking good middle pick up go for position two with that as a humbucker Position two with that as a single coil. It's doing that thing that the, the, the RGs do with the Floyd Rose. It's going brrrr when you hit it a very certain way, like a like an idiot does. I can feel that going whoa, 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 whoa. Bridge pick up, single coil. And then bridge humbucker. I'll use that for when I'll use the rat pedal. Oh, and 
am I? Uh, so if you, if you pull that back up again, so you get single coil. And then go to the middle position. Doesn't do anything. You go to position four. Well, position two is still, still these two single coils. And the middle position is still those two single coils. Next one is all three pickups on. And then if you go into the next position you get Gilmore on the outside too. Which I think is a, is a totally valid extra sound. I would call it Telecaster sound because it's kind of what a Telecaster does, isn't it? So that's the, the Gilmore switch to the outer coils. And that's it just on the neck pickup. And then that's position four. Yeah, um... I think I might put that bass on a minute. I'm in a jammy mood. The last couple of videos I've done have been quite short anyway, haven't they? Ten minutes in, I'm still talking shit. I like to play it longer, just I'm, I'm kind of getting into this guitar, I think it'll be quite good. Again, I think it's one of those ones you can get for not big money. Anyway, I did have to do, uh, what did I have to do to it? After adjustments that had been unset up at a, by a previous owner, you know. So I like my, my, my friend, Mr. W, Mr. Walloper from the, in America with his Yamaha Pacifica. You know, it's like, he'd, I'll adjust that. Oh no, you don't need to touch the saddles, you adjust the truss rod instead, right? Or vice versa, or whatever. Need the tone. So I need to look up and see where this sits in the Pacifica range. In some ways, I like it better. I quite like the headstock. It's quite, it's really, really boring, but I don't know. It's kind of like a really, really boring guitar, sort of. Uh, I don't know, I quite like it. It's, 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 is it maybe just nondescript? It's just a super strap. I don't know. The pickups say washburn on them as well. I don't know what that means, though. I always say when it's been used a specific sound on the guitar when you use that sound to overdub it's going to be the least sticky outy so if you use any other sound it'll stick out better see because if we're going to that position get it it's exactly that sound
I'm not stopping. No, I'm going to put them the base. Ha! Um, continue on the second second half of the video because sort of didn't do a live stream last week because I was too hungover. I had, a, I had a cold as well. I basically didn't get out of bed pretty much until late afternoon on Sunday, and then I kind of had something to eat, went to the toilet, and then went fell asleep again. Um, and then woke up and it was like nine o'clock, and I felt like I was like, I'm going to do a live stream. Sorry. This is so like the wee red bass, it's ridiculous. Um, sitting right there, it's, it's so like it. Just, obviously, it's scale, scale length and... Um, dimensions of the neck are what's guiding this uh, this is a much cooler bass than the wee red one um, just because it's a cool funky shape it's like I'm not one for the offset per se although I do like the Mustang I don't like the I, don't, I like the Duo Sonic as well I'm not not so keen on the Jaguar jazz bass shape which this is getting there but not quite because it's smaller I don't know and to be honest I think Headstocks are so important, and that headstock with this bass is a big yes to me. That headstock on a P bass, maybe not, do you know what I mean, or whatever, but just on this bass, I like it when a headstock goes well with what the guitar is. I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm, re I'm relatively happy with that as a, head, as, a, as a concept. The headstock doesn't look out of place, because um, it's a sort of, it's like a strap, but it's a little bit more pointy in metal. So the headstock's kind of like a strap, but getting in, it's not pointy pointy. And at the RG again, I thought I'd already picked the PGM up, but get this one as well. This one, you got a relatively pointy pointy guitar and a sort of pointy pointy headstock, but not too pointy. Yep, yep. I'll do that. And one, one more. Oh, no, uh, that, that headstock. Headstock itself, don't like, but on this guitar, Totally works, so you've got like the hockey stick, but it matches this bit. It's like, yeah, yeah, I, I like that that element of, you know, like on a good design guitar, you can get it wrong. Okay, one more. And then you get that, it was headstock on that. Perfectly acceptable. Maybe not super interesting, well, that's a heavy beast. Oof. What other headstocks are they kicking about? Telecaster, you know a Telecaster headstock, somehow it looks right. I actually did a Telecaster for JPAX yesterday. I dropped it off, um, put an upside down strat head, headstock on it, and I I quite like that. I don't. I maybe changed my mind when I got it because I used to. I never used to like these these tellies, you know, the ones with the horrible scratch plate on them. Uh, the the cust This is the custom, not the deluxe. This scratch plate's a manger. Um, on this guitar, it's great because you can't see it. You know, you've got a wee bit of a. A wee bit of background music now. Um, a wee bit of a shape, but Jen was like, oh, no, no, give me, give me. can I paint the scratch plate? Like, no, 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 you're not painting it. I said, like, oh, if you buy another one, paint it. I was like, it's a really ugly shape. She's like, oh, no, it's beautiful. And then she was, we were looking up Telecaster yesterday, and there was one of these with like a white scratch plate, and she was like, eh, you were right. I was like, anyway, can't remember what the point of that was. Oh, I like the headstock. And I like the headstock on the corker as well. Um, it's a little bit excessive. So this has turned into a little bit of a headstock thing. But hey, to be honest, I think I'm at the stage now where I don't really get that many. <laughs> if you've stuck around this long, you're always here. That headstock. So you've got a sort of Telecaster. Looks a wee bit, there's a Chapman that doesn't look entirely unlike that. But it's got that cool wee extra bit there. It's like, it's like pure yes. We have a pointless bit that's there just to look cool that costs, you would never, you could never really put on a cheap guitar because it's like it's, it's, that's going to cost money and you're not getting in for it but I like it just make it a little bit different and it kind of goes with this guitar even though yeah but ultimately what I'm quite really about to say is I like the headstock on this don't mind the headstock on the wee red bass and kind of goes with it but this one yeah <laughs> so if anyone wants to buy the wee red bass that's what I was thinking about like a I'm, I've been t using the wee red bass. I took it to that card on uh, Saturday night, which was great fun. But I think one of the reasons I got very drunk was after we'd, 
after we finished playing cards, I got to be rolling cube out with the disco drums and then the we red bass and just started playing basically whatever anyone would sing, but I would just sing it and I'd just play it in a disco fashion. <laughs> so we were playing all sorts of stuff and it was hilarious. There was a point where the guys that I played were playing a been playing for I don't know, 10 minutes, me and Peg. You know, you did, you did, uh, the guy's acoustic. That, you guys are really good at this. <laughs> Cheers. Don't think anyone's really expecting discos. Up here. Oh, you've come in with a wee toy guitar and a wee amp. That's nice. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. Pure. Whoa, here we go. <laughs> but the problem with that wee red bass is it's like that's J Pax number three. So, what's that worth? We kind of go for like 450, 500 quid or something like that for like a normal one. That's like, not only is it not a normal one, that's number three, and it's got expensive bits put on it. You know, it's got the upgraded tuners, which I think everyone's going to do to these guitars anyway, I would. Um, you know, rather than just having a Squire strat, if you buy if you J-Packs it, I'd be like, okay, it gets the Clussons and the, the warming pickups or whatever. Or whatever I've got lying about is probably more likely. So, I mean, you know, it's like feasible if... So because it's worth so much money, should I really be taking that to download? And having it in the car and using it for... Because that's what it's for, but the problem is I don't really need it unless that's the point. The point was it was the tenor base because it cost a tenor. But then once it got painted... Well, I think I changed the pickup first because I had one lying about and it was just much better. Like, oh. And then when I, after it was painted, I put other hardware on it. But I wouldn't think this needs um, any upgrading. It's got a jazz bass pickup. <laughs> Good for something. Actually, I bet you sound really good with it with both amps on. I'm kind of grown a little bit. I did a, a piece for um, one of the JPEX ones. It was a Yamaha RBX, and because Billy Sheehan has a uh, followed follows her. I'll be able to do the, the Billy Sheehan mod, which his his original guitar, I think his, his modern ones do the same as well, but his original one was like a, an old Fender P bass. And then the P bass pickup, and he put an EBO pickup in the neck, and then had like a second output. And his plan was he had an amp on each side of the stage, one of them getting the P bass pickup, and one of them getting the EBO pickup. And then I think, I think he only had a volume and a tone for the the Fender pickup. So just basically so he could be on both sides and you would get a slightly different sound on both sides. So I was I took kind of took that and ran with that a wee bit and I put a so the RBX I had or it's the same as this it's got a P and a J so what I did was I put a a socket on the front so if there's nothing stuck into the socket it was still volume volume tone everyone worked as normal but uh, the second output when you put it in it disconnected shit and basically sent the jazz the jazz bass pickup through its volume control out the other output but it left the original the p bass pickup with with its volume control and tone control coming out the main output which meant that you could have like what, what i've got here i've got the bass amp playing clean and i had to get well, i've just turned the distortion off so i've got the both these amps on so you've got clean and fuzz which is great whereas if, if you just use the just use the fuzz. It's like it doesn't have the original signal. Yeah, so I did that. So and basically what that means in this situation, as I'm when I'm playing just now, I would have a volume for the bass and a volume for the fuzz bass so you could fade in. I thought that was a great idea, and then I realised if I put a push pull pot in, as well, what I could do is if I pulled that push put up, push pull up, it reroutes it again, so that this P bass pickup gets split in two, so the the two fat strings, as in this bit of the pickup, get sent out the main output, and with this volume, and the two thin strings, get sent out of the second output with it, with its own volume, so you could basically go, so if I'm if you're doing which obviously I spend a lot of time doing funky town. It meant that that note would come out of that amp 
-hmm. and that note would come out of that amp so you can go and it kind of goes whoop, 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 whoop. but the whole thing is if you don't stick anything into this second socket everyone just works as normal so you lose nothing um, so at that space that I've had one of these I would do that I don't know where I would put the extra socket maybe on the edge somewhere down there um, I love this thing it's got like a metal plate with a volume control on it it kind of looks a little bit messy having the vo these I kind of I kind of feel that this is on a on there's a guitar that this guitar kind of like my, maybe my shocking bird where it's just got this on it so you've just got a volume and the jack socket the extra knobs kind of look, oh I've got this great I'll put that on what about the other knobs there? we'll just put them on the plate next to it it's a little bit of that just a box start oh no, it's not really it's a slightly more fancy um Ibanez bass bridge same as the Ibanez Gax which I should never have sold I had an Ibanez Gax bass it was like an EBO apart from it was good um they were amazing basses I don't think they were um made for very long I don't know what they didn't sell but basically this but uh more SG shape maybe a bit, a bit more like the the Falcon that kind of shape matte black <laughs> That was definitely before j -Pax. otherwise it would have been j packs to possibly kept. Yeah. So we're back on now. The P bass pickup with the tone. It's a little bit, I think maybe I would maybe put, I think I've got slightly thicker strings on the, you know, maybe 105s instead of 100s on the wee red bass. It's a, lot, a wee bit bendier than I would expect, but I mean, totally playable. There's definitely a short scale bass does sound different it does a different thing you can use either this or a, like a full scale p bass i'm not they're different it's got a much more whoop whoop sound it sounds more like a double bass not that much more like a double bass but slightly more than a p bass does This is brand new, and uh, got a, it's like it says because it became a recommended bass. I did a video the other day when I was uh, looking at what kind of bass I would buy, uh, and I, I'd totally buy one of these. Um, not sure what color would take. I do quite like this one, um, but really nice neck. TMB thirty, yeah. So the thirty is the well thirty inch scale one. I'm pretty sure the other one's a hundred. It's not a hundred inch scale. It's a thirty four inch scale. You would have thought T A. Call it T M for tal talisman, talman, talman. It's called. Quite like Talisman, but Talman. But one. I was doing those I forgot I was actually doing another video. Yeah, it's hard to carve metal cards. I thought it was crap when I was playing over it. See that wee intentional mistake there? Jazz bass pickup because the the, fu 
first bass um, gets picked up a bit better because it's more treble. <laughs> So fantastic, big guitars. Anyway, if I were selling anything or doing anything, or then fixed one of these in a trade would be quite interesting. Um, kind of, I mean, I'll be honest, I'd quite like a JPEX one, that'd be pretty cool. Eh? But then I would use that to replace the wee red bass, and then the wee red bass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd kind of like that to be able to be set to go up a full beat, but it's kind of sitting off a well just now. So basically, I think we're just going for it's good for vibrato, not actually raising to a pitch. I know. <laughs> That's why I go there. Okay. Not bad.
tap, it's up the fluttering, I think it's called that. Yeah, brrr. to do the honours of putting in some tremolo testing but it's within the realms of being still in tune considering I was bending quite a lot and these strings have all just been put on it so I, I, I would conclude that yes this is a very good bridge especially since I was doing things there you should really only do it in a flying rose It wasn't miles out of tune, just a wee bit, a wee bit on the A string. I was being quite brutal with that there, though. I'd be tempted to say that there's nothing, there's nothing really to do with the, the tremolo. That's just me going too much. Quite powerful pickups. Not quite getting that. Not getting that glassy shimmer. They're a bit modern. But it's a great but Yeah, so there you go, 45 minutes of talking crap. So I don't know. What time is it just now? Yeah, I'm not but I'm not gonna manage to upload a 45 minute video in 20 minutes before the other one goes live, so this might be out at midnight or something. Welcome, catch you later.